wallet, passport, phone, phone, morning, welcome to Heathrow Airport, nearly. Hi, it's Craig. Welcome back to Craig's Life. I am on my way to California this morning. So I am currently in my hotel, which is the uh, Thistle at Terminal 5 at Heathrow. If you want to know more about this hotel, I'll leave the link uh, down below and also at the end so you can, you can check this one out. So I'm on my way to San Diego to see my family and I am flying British Airways Club World here out of Heathrow. Now some of you may be asking, okay, fair enough, why are you going into San Diego? Why aren't you going to Los Angeles? What I could do, I've got family near Los Angeles, but the traffic around that area is horrendous and I don't want my aunt and uncle driving that sort of, sort of distance. It could take anything between two and four hours to get to each way from, from um, from LAX. Uh, I could hire a car. I've uh, hired cars in the past. Me and Daniel have hired cars, but it's good having two of us, even if there's one keeping an extra eye on the sat and having another eye looking at the set of the roads as while well I'm driving. It, it is horrendous. Plus there's around eight, nine flights a day uh, out of Heathrow alone into LAX. So you've got British Airways, Virgin, Delta, United, American. And the last time we went, we landed at the same time as a Virgin and a Singapore Airlines and another one. And it took us forever to get through immigration. So that is why I am flying in to San Diego. There are very few international flights long haul that go into San Diego. In fact, I've only found three long haul that will go into San Diego. This one out of Heathrow, which is daily and it's direct. Um, Lufthansa out of Munich and... Um, Japan Airlines out of Narita. There are a few other ones, there's a few out of Canada, there's a couple out of Mexico, but generally there's not many long haul international flights going to San Diego. Hopefully it should mean that immigration will be a lot faster. The other thing is as well, my cousin lives about 20 minutes away from the airport, so she could just look up and go, ah, that's British Airways, time to get in the car. So that is why I am flying in to San Diego. I'm going to be on the Airbus A350-1000, which is one of British Airways' newer planes, and I'm going to be in the new Club World Suites. I've got a plane to catch. Come with me. access to the pod. So, key the code in. There we go. Terminal 5. Please let people off the pod before you get in. Please touch the Closing doors. Start. Ah, there we go. These pods go every couple of minutes. It would be a shame if the uh, if the third runway does get built, which would be useful for Heathrow, but uh, it is highly likely that this pod system will go with it because it may be built in this area. It is really useful. I've laid my cases down, top tip, because obviously we're going to be held and they just slide all over the place. Hold a maximum of four people. The hotel normally charges seven pound per person 
a journey. Um, and I'm pretty sure he's actually done me this for free. Welcome to Terminal 5. Thank you. Thanks, please. So in the suite, we've got a little, little cup here, a little vanity area, a bottle of water they put in for us. <laughs> and uh, we also have little compartment here. I think I'll just pop the ones in there for now. Oh, it doesn't show properly. Maybe I won't then. 
So in this one we've got the controller for the TV, some charging points, international plugs there, USB, USB, headphones, it's all where that's where they put the headphones in. That's the uh, seat controllers here. Little light here. And uh, pocket just down there. Underneath there that's the that's the bedding that we get. Big screen. Catch under there. Like that. We'll go all the way. Back up. Yeah. Complete sliding door on the uh, suite. Just don't don't pull the red tag because that's the emergency. They'll unlock them when we take off, so we can just adjust them as we need to. Nice comfy pillow. This one has a three-point safety belt, but it doesn't unhook like this, so you just got the light belt. So you've got to use the, the three-point one, just like your car, to take off and land it. The, um, the A350 only offers a three-class configuration of British Airways. The 777s and the A380s and the 747s when they have them had four. So this one doesn't have a first class. So this is the upper class on this particular aircraft. Uh, with a bit of smaller aircraft. And this is um, one of the first aircrafts in the fleets that was fitted with the new Club World Suite. So uh, it's very comfortable. It's a rainy day out there in London. Have a look at this. I'm on holiday. Cheers. <laughs> a wonderful cabin crew just taken the, uh, the, the the lunch order. So I've gone for the salmon and the chicken and a drink after we take off, it'll be a Baileys. So as I've already said, you know, I am on holiday.
this is just the starter, the smoked salmon, bread, salad, water and uh, a glass of wine as well. Absolutely fabulous. Beautiful presentation. The main course I ordered was the roasted British Chicken Supreme with cold cannon, grilled vegetables and brown ale jus. It's just arrived and there it is. It doesn't look quite as appetizing as it sounds but I'm sure it'll taste okay so uh, let's see what it's like. Oh, I think that answers that question. It's very nice. And dessert is the banana chocolate mousse. Well, a few days has now passed since the flight and I'm currently at my aunt and uncle's house uh, here in California, not far from San Bernardino, enjoying uh, what is a glorious day. We've had a little bit of rain, but so far it's a, it's a, a glorious day here. Now let me tell you a little bit about some of the things that happened on the flight and 
regarding it. Now, some things were the airline's fault and some things weren't. Uh, first of all, we were an hour late leaving Heathrow. This was due to a number of reasons. First of all, it was absolutely throwing it down at Heathrow. And one of the problems that they have with that is it takes longer for the engines to start. So the compressors that hook up to the aircraft to help start the engines were with other aircraft a little bit longer and so were the tugs because it took longer to get the engines going the tugs were at the aircraft a little bit longer so we were late because we were then waiting for the compressor to come and start the engine or the generator whatever it is to start the engine and then waiting for a tug to push us back so we were an hour late taking off the other thing with the aircraft as well is that the APU uh, the auxiliary power supply wasn't working. Now, this is a generator, it sits in the tail of the aircraft and while the engines are off, it keeps things like the air conditioning actually going in the cabin. So you might have noticed me going like that with the menu, it's because it was hot and as you can imagine in the economy where there's a lot more people, it would have been quite uncomfortable back there. So that was the flight. You've also seen uh, some videos of some lovely views out of the window as we came across because we were chasing the sun most of the way over. So some wonderful views and then the plane spun around and came in over Tijuana uh, in Mexico. <clears throat> One week, once we had landed in San Diego, the, the captain did say before we landed that because the APU of course wasn't working, that they would need to hook up like an umbilical power supply to the aircraft from the air bridge and they'd keep one engine running until this power supply was hooked up it would take three or four minutes he said 25 minutes later the power supply was hooked up the engine was shut down then we could unfasten our seat belts and get off now is that the airline's fault i suppose to a certain extent it is because the apu should have been working and that aircraft isn't fully serviceable but you can fly without the APU working so you can argue that one it did take a long time at San Diego we could put that down to the ground staff the other thing is when we actually did get off the plane and followed the signs to international arrivals we went up the escalators and the doors were locked and to the point where people were coming up the escalators and they had to shut the escalators down because people couldn't get into this little area at the top of the stairs and then somebody ran up and opened up the uh, doors and let us all through. So in San Diego, because we were late, we also landed at the same time as an Alaskan Airlines flight that had come in from Mexico. So we'd had two lots of um, arrivals at the same time. I thought with it just being the odd international flight, it would be a, li a lot quicker. It took about half an hour to go through immigration. The difference is in San Diego, you collect your luggage first, then you do immigration. Other airports like San Francisco or Los Angeles, where I have flown into a lot, you do immigration, then you do the luggage, then you do uh, customs. My guess is, is because they don't have as many international flights going to San Diego and that's why they do the whole thing once rather than having two lines, one for immigration and one for um, customs. So that's my guess. Unfortunately, I got a text message through the British Airways app on my phone saying that there was a delay with my luggage. Sure enough, my luggage was missing. And when I went across to the desk and they were filling forms of where to send the luggage to, there must have been 40 or 50 names of people who didn't have the luggage. I was watching the luggage coming off onto the carousel. The business class customers, the Club World, they got the little label on and they also have a little tag saying uh, priority. There weren't many of those coming off, so there was a lot of business class customers did not get their luggage. So that really is unacceptable because I checked my bag in at 9 o'clock in the morning and the plane left at 2, an hour late. There was no excuse for not having that luggage on that plane. So British Airways, with all those customers without the luggage, what was going on? That is not good enough. That was unacceptable. I was on the phone, not the phone, on the computer, on the live chat the next morning. Uh, saying where is my luggage I'd got the reference number that they'd given me in the airport and the live chat was saying good news we found a potential case that matches your number and your flight details I'm like potential uh, and that's the good news uh, I said so is it on today's flight because there's only one flight a day to San Diego couldn't tell me please allow 24 to 48 hours for us to find out not good enough as it turns out, it was on the next day's flight and it turned up about 10 o'clock the following day 
at night. Um, so I earlier in the day, because normally I'd have a change of clothes in the the hand luggage that I take with me, and for some reason I didn't, and I don't honestly know why. It's a good job I was staying with my cousin because she'd actually got some underwear that she was going to get to my nephew for Christmas, which was brand new. She says, here, take some of this. Here's some socks. Here's a t-shirt he doesn't wear. You can use this. And we went to Walmart and I ended up buying a load of stuff, which in all honesty, now my case is turned out. I'm going to take it back and get a refund. But um, she had all the toiletries and stuff as well. So it is sheer good luck that I was staying with with my cousin because otherwise a lot of people would have been very inconvenienced and there was a lot of very annoyed and very frustrated people going through San Diego because British Airways didn't put the luggage on the plane. I'm not going to say they lost it. If you come from Paris via Heathrow, maybe we can accept that. But when that luggage was checked in with no connection at 9 o'clock in the morning and they had four hours to get it on the plane, that's unacceptable absolutely and British Airways if you're watching it that was unacceptable there was no excuses for that overall the flight was very good the food was very nice the plane was very comfortable everybody on board was very nice and very friendly so as far as the flight was goes, yeah it was a great flight as far as some of the things that happened uh, luggage not going there that is a huge no there's no excuse for that getting to San Diego and the door being locked and it taking so long well, we'll blame ground crews for that one. Um, I can't say that's the airline's fault. But maybe you should get your aircraft fully operational before you fly them. Um, but overall, that was um, quite a pleasant flight. I think it's certainly a lot more convenient flying into San Diego than flying into LAX. As far as the cost difference, bear in mind this was a Club World ticket. And, and I did get a good deal on this because I had... Uh, some uh, Avios points that I used but the difference between flying into San Diego and flying into Los Angeles was tens of pounds we're not talking hundreds it was I don't know what it was whether it was slightly cheaper or slightly more expensive but there was probably no more than about 50 pounds difference between the two different airports so it's certainly worth considering if you're going into that part of the world and that's basically all I can say about it so that is wrapping this video up so that was um, British Airways 273 Heathrow to San Diego I hope you've enjoyed this review I know this is a bit longer than I normally do and until the next time look forward to seeing you right here on Craig's Life bye